So here I need to just remove the cowl. And you can see that that's how easy it is to come out. Now I've been having this constant dinging sound in mine. Um, and it appears that this is actually kind of loose and not tight anymore. So uh, I think I'm going to just swap this one out for a new one. Alright guys, so working on getting the clock spring off of the bus uh, from, the, uh, from the standpoint of if for some reason uh, I break something, I'd rather break it on the column that I'm tending to work on and replace anyways. So um, you can kind of see that uh, someone has kind of botched into my clock spring harness anyways. Um, so I was having a constant ding in which I thought was the ignition. So I did remove the ignition um, and you can see I've got a red wire here that I think goes up to a security signal issue um, which I'll deal with. Um, so here you can see on the column there's a clip here that holds this in and then there's another one uh, right back here. Uh, let me get some light on that for you guys. Um, right there. And then it actually goes back into uh, here and you can see that this is where the main harness goes uh, for the clock spring. So on a non-cruise clock spring harness, you're going to only see uh, five wires. You'll see a blue, uh, black and pink, a green and orange striped, a blue or a light blue with white and then um, a gray with an orange. So here you can kind of see where those wires go. Um, the black and pink go up to the column side, gray and white, gray, well, I guess this is light gray, dark gray and orange. You've got green and an orange stripe and then you've got a solid blue. Um, so those connectors uh, I'm going to get under there and unhook those. And then on the clock spring removal, you can see that there's two tabs here. Um, one on the bottom, and then one on the top, um, which you just pry off. And then you can actually uh, start to move the clock spring up and down. Um, I'm not going to remove it yet because the wires connectors are still hooked up underneath. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unhook those now and then I should be able to pull this whole thing off. Alright, so following suit, just like video one shows the removal, you gotta take the data link connector off underneath this bracket, which is two seven millimeters. And you can just run those screws back up in there so you don't lose them for later. And then I had a ground that was right up here on a screw, so I undid that. Um, there is these six 8mm bolts that need to come out for this bracket to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. My impact. And again, I made sure to keep a couple of these from the junkyard when I removed them from the first video because you just never know, especially when you're working on your own stuff, you just never know if something's going to fall or you're going to lose it. So I tend to keep extra stuff around. just because you just never know if you're going to need them. So, especially working with the dash, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot, um, if you will, find another one. So, 
you don't want to have to make a run to the hardware store because you've lost one bolt. All right, with that removed, I'll have more access uh, to get up under here uh, to get to these connections. So I'm looking at these connections there um, to grab. And I'm gonna set these bolts up out of the way so I don't lose them. Set those in the cup holder. All right, so now I am looking at removing the connectors that I'll try to get some better light on uh, right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And again, they're two prongs. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down so I don't break them. All right guys, so with these two connectors um, for the clock spring, I just wanted to show that uh, these are the two that you have to release. Um, just down a little bit. So they are a male connection on the body side and a female on the other. So you can actually see here um, in this connector, there's only three pins. Um, and there's six pins on this one with six wires going to it. Um, and the same thing over here, you've got two wires coming in and two pins uh, on the smaller plug uh, here, which is kind of hard to see, but there's the good angle there. Now, if I go over to the donor uh, column, you can actually see uh, the same thing uh, applies here. Now there's six wires that go to this connection from the clock spring and then you've got your two wires that are the same in this smaller connector. So you can definitely see that the factory wires them, uh, but on the non ones, uh, you can see as I start to pull this out here, um, they're not there. So. Um, this is why you need the clock spring from a cruise unit, at least for the 2002 uh, E450 school bus anyways. Um. So you can see, uh, as mentioned before, that my bus has been spliced into this, um, which I am a, not a fan at all. So I'm actually just gonna cut this wire here um, and now it's not live anymore. Now that I've got the clock spring undone, it actually just slides straight out. Now I did mark the top of this um, before I took it out um, just for reference. Um, so again, here is the, the non cruise control clock spring. This has a part number uh, on the con on the clock spring as XC2 XC2T dash one four A six six four dash BB. And you can see the year there uh, is 2001. This is 2002 uh, vehicle. And then on the donor, actually, uh, it's XC2T-14A664-AB. Um, and this has a date code of March 13th of 2005, which is odd because um, the bus it came out of is a 2000 three so hopefully uh, everything is good to go um, for that all right guys so I got the old spring off and the new spring installed again it just snaps on uh, in three parts so you can see that 
Um, you can see that I actually took apart the dash because um, I don't have a radio and uh, I actually scored uh, an insert uh, to put like a CD player deck in there uh, for now. Um, I'd love to have a double din, but um, so I took that apart um, mainly because I wanted to get the top part off here. Plus, um, the I switched out the turn signal switch. Uh, the turn signal switch is the same between the buses because uh, this was a 03 and mine's an 02, as mentioned before. Uh, so I just took out the screws, uh, their little Torx head screws. Um, this one was giving me fits uh, on my way home uh, when I drove it 300 miles. Uh, it didn't want to work, um, right? So this one is way cleaner and uh, seems to work better. This looks like it was the factory uh, one. All the plugs were the same uh, in which I cut off at the junkyard. So cross-reference those wires and those are the same. So now I am just putting uh, the clock spring in position here. Uh, so I can uh, get that ready uh, for install. Um, probably get, uh, I'll just have to run this down and uh, plug it into these two connectors in which I showed you before. Um, and then I should be good to go. And then we'll be reinstalling the steering wheel after that and cleaning it up and put the airbag back on.